At that point, the general opinion was that the image on the Shroud of Turin was some kind of a painting. They didn't want to believe it, because if the Shroud is the authentic burial cloth of Jesus, and the images were made by a burst of radiation from the body, which I believe most Shroud researchers believe today. A nuclear engineer explains the Shroud of Turin and all the amazing scientific evidences that prove that this is something supernatural is absolutely amazing. Shout out to the Loop Cast. It's absolutely fascinating. Go subscribe to the channel and I'm going to put the link to the rest of the video in the description so you can check out the whole thing. What he expected to see uh, was a, a blurry negative image because what you look at when you see it with your unaided eye, it's kind of blurry. Uh, and it's hard to see exactly what it is. Uh, and so as he was in the dark room, and, and he would have held it up as the image was, was coming up. And at that point, the way the story goes, and I assume it's true, that he almost dropped it at that point because of shock. Mm -hmm. Because instead of seeing a blurry, uh, a blurry positive image, he saw a fairly clear negative image. Mm. That totally surprised him because at, at that point, the general opinion was that the image on the Shroud of Turin was some kind of a painting. Whoa. Uh, and so, uh, but a painter in that era would never have seen a negative image. They wouldn't even know what that concept was. Yeah. Uh, they, they wouldn't have known until the invention of the camera. Uh, and so when he saw what was the equivalent of a ne negative image, what should have been a negative image, but it was actually a positive image on his plate. The, he immediately reasoned out that, therefore, what was on the shroud was a negative image. Mm. That indicates that it's authentic, because it couldn't be a painting. This would be his thinking process, because a painter in that era would never have seen a negative image, and you can't paint what you've never seen. So at that point, the response of people uh, was that, they accused him of faking the pictures. No way. And as a lawyer, he, he lost his credibility until now. It just, yeah, it's mind boggling me, for me to, to hear to, when people say like, this is completely fake. Yeah, first of all, how are you going to replicate this? How You can't even replicate it now, let alone in the medieval time period it's, you know, all the people say that it's fake and is made in the middle of the evil time. How are you going to, you can't even do it then. And if it's 2000 years old, which all of the signs are pointing to it, because that's the exact clause that they would have used during those time periods. They found pollen and dirt that go back to Jerusalem. They found blood on the shroud. Why would there be blood on the shroud? I don't know. Maybe because someone, maybe because it was used for a dead body, not for a painting not for sculpture. 1931, uh, when uh, Giuseppe Henry took the next photograph and proved the same thing that wow. Segunda Pia found in 1898. Uh, and so the uh, modern scientific approach to the shroud was not done uh, until Segunda Pia took his photographs in 1898. There were some people that believed Segunda Pia uh, and uh, did uh, extensive research on it at that point. Uh, and uh, th there were some very famous scientists in involved in the process. Uh, and so that in just a few years, they went back uh, to re report this. I'm sorry, I don't remember the names of them right now. Uh, they went back to report in, in the large uh, symposium what they found. And it was interesting that all the other scientists just rejected it. That's great. They didn't want to believe it. Hmm. Uh, because if the shroud is the authentic burial cloth of Jesus and the images were made by a burst of radiation from the body, which I believe most uh, shroud researchers believe today, uh, if the images were made by a burst of radiation from the body, how does that happen? Well, dead bodies don't emit such a burst of radiation. That would only occur uh, if Jesus was resurrected from the dead 
so that the atoms in his body disappeared from the per our perception uh, of reality uh, and made a transition to an alternate dimensionality. Wow. In physics terminology, that's what I would call it. Layman might call it heaven, but that's okay. Uh, I'd call it an alternate dimensionality. A, a dimensionality would be a system of di alternate di dimensions. Because you stop and think about it, we have five senses. We can see, we can hear, we can smell, taste, and touch. And with those five senses, we automatically assume that we're detecting all of reality. But there's no evidence for that. <laughs> there's actually no proof for that. And string theory... Wow, he's going to get a string theory with this oh man i love it this is this is amazing but think about it the best explanation for there to be a picture a negative image is for someone to completely disappear from reality and enter to another dimension that's mind-blowing stuff i love it so much haters gonna hate they're gonna try to debunk this, but like, man, imagine if it is and just no one ever would agree on it. In, in its attempt to come up with a theory of everything, which was the main emphasis of modern physics for the last 50 or 60 years, come up with a theory that explains uh, all the subatomic particles and all their characteristics, as, as well as the forces in nature. A and the theories that they came up with are, are called string theories where a string is not a normal piece of string, as, as you would think, but it's an extremely short length of pure energy, whatever that is. Uh, but, it, but they said, we can explain all the characteristics of subatomic particles and uh, forces in nature, except for gravity, uh, if you allow us one assumption. And that is that there are alternate dimensions which our five senses cannot detect. Wow. It doesn't make sense. So when you, so <laughs> yeah. you understand what I'm saying? I hope you understand. I, I think I'm, I think I'm trying. Okay. Let me just do my best to recap. I think. Yes. And then maybe we can say we're on the same page. So people up until the point of that man taking the first picture of the shroud. Yes. Thought that someone had painted on a like smudged image that looks kind of like Jesus. on Yeah. His yes. Clock. Yes. Kind of, yeah. A fake, a, a smudged emphasis an image, you know, to take into a church and uh, you draw visitors from all over the world right. and they'd, they'd bring money. Right. <laughs> totally. Right. Okay. So that was the assumption until this photograph was taken. And the guy who took the photograph was so shocked by yes. what came. It wasn't a negative, but a positive yes. because it looked so much like a man yes. assuming that man was Jesus because this is his burial cloth, like striking yes. resemblance matching with um, the, the wounds of Jesus uh, everything, the whole, whole body cloth was like, Oh my gosh, this is a man who looked like he was crucified and looks like we thought Jesus would look like. Almost lost his cr credibility, actually did probably lose his credibility on that. Reaffirmed by a second person. The only way, because the only way that this would be possible, because how people die normally, you know, this, wouldn't, this type of radiation wouldn't occur, would oh, be sure. that there was some type of burst of radiation, uh, which, we, which we would say is the resurrection, which you would say is the re resurrection. Um, the only way that it could possibly be there, this negative image is because of some blast of radiation. Man, what does that look like in our today day life? It's inconceivable. Like, what does it look like to be resurrected? To that occurred that would leave that type of imprint on the burial cloth, yes. and the the explanation for that is that it entered a different dimension. Yes. Which, as you said, I am a layman would probably be heaven or some type of spiritual existence yeah. beyond the physical plane. Yes. Um, and you're now explaining that uh, scientists have become fascinated with this in physics because it could be explained potentially by string theory, which yes. tries to explain what is beyond the five senses that we currently possess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what I'm saying here okay. is that so, so that in Jesus, and, and this goes back to my, if you go to my website, shroudresearch.net, uh, in in starting this effort on, on the Shroud of Turin, the first thing I did was paper number one. Uh, uh, if you go over to the third page on my website, shroudresearch.net, that's where I have all my papers that I've written. I've written 39 papers on the Shroud of Turin. So paper number two did an extensive uh, Bible study on the nature of Jesus' resurrection and resurrection in general uh, in the Bible, the theology of resurrection. And then 
Uh, so that was from a biblical perspective uh, right. as to how Jesus' body could have disappeared from our perception of reality. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Okay. It, it, his body uh, w was not, uh, the mass of his body did not make a transition into pure energy because that would have created a nuclear explosion that's a thousand times larger than the largest nuclear weapon ever set off. It would have destroyed huh. the cloth. It would have destroyed the tomb. It would have destroyed Jerusalem. It would have des des destroyed most of Israel. That's so crazy. that did not happen. Well, that's my paper number two, where I go through seven different options, uh, scientific options for uh, how the body could have disappeared from our perception of reality. My conclusion, uh, especially given the fact that Jesus' body reappeared in his post-resurrection appearances without going through the walls, without going through the locked door, without going through the, the uh, locked windows, it simply appeared within the room, shocking everyone. How is that possible? Well, it is possible if you're making transitions between alternate dimensions. That would be the, the physics term for it. Talking about the unseen realm, the supernatural realm, where none of us can go from our fleshly bodies, but from a supernatural aspect, it's possible. But I absolutely love this because I feel like there's an explanation for everything. I feel like you can explain just like how all the atoms are working, watching baseball game, you can you can like calculate that or whatever, but it, obviously it's boring. But for a miracle, sometimes I feel like there's something, some substance and something just changes or like water turned into wine. Like how did that actually happen? But if you could study that, I feel like there would be an explanation. You could see like, well, all of a sudden, obviously you wouldn't know how it happened. But you could see what happened. That's what I think is really fascinating. And I love that he is going down that road. Okay. So that's what I'm okay. that's that's the background to this. Uh, let, let me show you let me show you one thing. Oh wow. Uh, in the in the June 1980 issue of National Geographic. Now, this isn't it, but we'll get to it. June okay. 1980, a National Geographic it is just a collection of photos with discussion on them. Uh, but in the June 1980 issue, they have a beautiful four-page fold-out. So you can see the front image here, the front image of the Shroud of Turin, and then you have the back image. Uh, you might hold it upside down here where so that you can see the head here. So it's a head-to-head -head image. Uh, these these scorch marks uh, occurred in fif uh, 1532 when it was in, folded up in a, a silver box in Chambery, France, and, and the church caught fire. And they ran in uh, 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 with the attempt to save the most valuable possession of Christianity. Wow. And that's the Shroud of Turin. <laughs> So they ran in at the risk of their lives, and they were able to pull it, get it out. And when they did so, uh, they threw water on it. You can see some of the water stains, uh, for example, here, where they threw hmm. water on it to cool it down. But it, it, what it did, because it was folded up, one side was scorched, so it left these scorch marks. And then one corner was uh. burned, and, and you can see that down here, so that 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 one corner that was burned uh they they had to patch it in four places here here no way uh and then here and here so that one corner that burned left uh, uh required 16 patches to be put onto the shroud when it was unfolded so so that's what we have but what i wanted to point out to you was that when i made a presentation at the university of california at berkeley in a hotel there. Uh, a friend and myself wa walked in uh, to the hotel and I walked up to the front desk and, and I said to the young man that was there, I'm here to make a presentation on the Shroud of Turin. And he said, what's that? And so I whipped out this, this copy, Shroud of Turin, laid it in front of him, and in about two seconds he said, that's Jesus. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> well, that's what everyone should realize. And they yeah. should. Man, but I didn't realize that's how much patching they did. That would make sense, though, for when they did that carbon dating. They took a little piece of that, obviously, because they have to destroy the, the artifact to do the carbon dating. And they took a little piece of the patch from the medieval times, like 600 years ago. And that's why they think that it was a hoax. Imagine, though, if it didn't get caught up and burned, man. Realize that quickly. That's Jesus, just by looking at it. Why do you have to do years and years of experiments on it? You look at it and you know it's Jesus. And why, why is Why, it? why do you think he, he said that, the young man? Uh, because in his mind, he had a concept of what Jesus looked like. And this becomes interesting in history because the history of the shroud uh, actually goes back uh, th this is tradition. Uh, of course, you have to realize that in, in the first uh, probably uh, 300 years of Christianity, I think I calculated one time, uh, that they were under severe persecution 82% of the time in the first 300 years. Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, and so they, they, they didn't want to lose the Shroud of Turin so that when the emperor heard that there was a church, had the burial cloth of Jesus, he wanted it. And this is according to tradition. He sent his agents to get it. Now, at that point, uh, the, the, uh, the church, uh, in, in the churches, there was a person called the keeper of the relics. So the, the emperor's agents went, went to the keeper of the relics, uh, and he wouldn't tell where it was. They threatened to torture him. He said, I'm not telling you. So they tortured him to the point of death. At that point, nobody knew where it was. He had hidden it. It wasn't uh, till uh, the, probably the early 500s. Now, th th this event took place maybe in the late 100s, the early 200s. So it, w it was probably th about 300 years where nobody knew where it was. Hmm. Uh, finally, the, uh, the wall needed to be repaired due to multiple fires and floods. And in the repair process, above one gate, up in a niche, they when they tore, tore the wall apart, they found this object, probably with documentation to it, uh, as to what it was and where it came from, etc. Uh, and so it was at that, at that point that people knew what Jesus looked like. They didn't know before. So at that point then, in, in about 550 AD or so, was the first painting made. It was the, uh, it's called the Christ Pantocrator image. Uh, and then that image, based upon the, the face on the Shroud of Turin, that image on the Christ Pantocrator image was then copied in Byzantine iconography. That's amazing. Who would have thought? I didn't really, like... The explanations of the Shroud of Turin and the history behind it is mind-blowing and so cool. But I think it is important to study things and to, to prove, not necessarily prove, but to find evidence and undeniable, I would say, evidence for Jesus, because I think that's important as well. But I find it fascinating. Guys, if you want to watch the entire podcast, go to the loop cast it will be in the description below you can check out the entire thing so interesting i would love to know what you guys think in the description below um and if you've never decided to follow jesus i encourage you to do that today guys there's amazing evidence all around and uh, i encourage you to put your faith and trust in him even when all else fails when even when all else seems scary and lost Go to Jesus today. Know that he loves you and he's longing to have a relationship with you. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I encourage you to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't. And always remember, guys, Jesus loves you.